All righty, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to my weekly outlook for this week. This is the week of October 14th. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, there are a ton, a ton of brand new faces on here, lots of new people. So I just want to give you guys a little bit of introduction about myself. Uh, my name is David Schinkel. I'm the CEO and founder of Positive Traders. And if this is your guys' very first time hopping onto one of these weekly outlooks, um, I try to do it, you know, I'd say out of 52 weeks out of the year, I probably do it 50 out of the 52 weeks. You know, I do it almost every single Sunday for you guys for free, just like this. Um, we look at the economic calendar real quick, and then we'll look at a couple pairs. Keep in mind, guys, that this is just my opinions on what the markets could do. Uh, please do not take this as financial or inve investment advice. This should just be just for educational purposes and help you guys kind of see what I am looking at for the week. But yeah, expect, I'm, I'm glad to have you guys here and I uh, can't wait to be providing value to you guys and everybody learning together. And if you guys have any questions at all, um, definitely take some notes. Feel free to throw uh, any questions that you have inside of the chat room. I'll get to them before we end. And also feel free to reach out to me on social media if you guys have any questions. But to start off the week, um, let's look at the economic calendar, guys. And right now is gonna be the first time I'm looking at this two for the week. So we're gonna be able to analyze this together. So let's go ahead. We got something in the chat room. Awesome, guys. Good to see all you guys excited. Um, but let's go through this. Uh, lots of red folders. Let's see. Tomorrow, we've got a couple things. Retail sales for the dollar. A um, couple other things coming out for the New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, we got some average earnings index. That's going to be pretty big for the pound on Tuesday. Year, year over year CPI report also keep in mind guys that that's not a month over month or a quarter over quarter it looks like Wednesday there's a lot of year over year reports coming out most notably the year over year CPI for the pound so that should be a market mover Wednesday we also have FOMC meeting minutes so that's gonna be should, this looks like it's gonna be a very very volatile week guys so um, as traders that's good though we, we seek volatility you know it's a little bit dangerous when the markets get volatile we need to make sure that our risk to reward on the trades that we place and of course obviously risk management is good but volatility is what makes the market moves uh, is what makes the market move and that's what we like to see so I wouldn't say that there's any super key risk events this week guys when I say key risk event I just mean probably like the most important things this week is what would probably be the the meeting minutes that's going to be big and then I mean everything else is pretty pretty high impact as well so I don't want to spend too much time boring you guys going over every single one of these things so just know just look at the calendar guys make sure you have it set to the right time zone for where you are just be notable um, especially if you guys are the kind of people that are like scalping you're getting in and out of the market very quickly you have to be very careful around these news but without further ado guys let's jump into the juicy stuff and let me give you guys my opinion of what I think is going on for this week um, before I do I just kind of want to give you guys a couple no, we'll, we'll go through it as we go. So the dollar index, let's just kind of reverse really quick back to September 13th when I gave, some of you guys may have been here, some of you guys may have not, but on the dollar index, um, I said that we're probably gonna make a pullback towards the 93.2 zone and then we were taking off, right? I, I'm short-term bearish on the dollar, long-term bullish on the dollar. And we've had a couple different trading scenarios um, between them. But for the most part, we are looking pretty accurate. We did make a pullback down and we are finding buyers moving the market higher. Now, here is my opinion, guys. I believe that this week we are going to see probably a little bit of downside on the dollars. So let me go to the live chart really quickly. Let me just break this down a little bit. Um, this trend line right here, guys, that I have. Um, by the way, if you guys are watching me for the first time, let me just be really, really clear with you guys with my trend lines and zones, or I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to say is that my trend lines are usually zones. Okay. So one big common misconception with a lot of traders is they tend to think that like a trend line is like a line in the stand. Like it, it can't pass that line. And sometimes it, it does, right? Sometimes you'll notice trend lines are perfect and it'll, it'll touch exactly, you know, to the tip and then you know, reject off of it multiple times. Um, other times in this case, I consider this a zone. You can obviously see like right here where we 
that this did not have anything to do with the trend line. But we can see multiple times in the past that this kind of zone, this ascending zone moving up has definitely provided some support for the dollar um, in the past couple months. Now, I do think that we are going to see a little bit of downside this week on the dollar. We may actually go back down and make a double bottom. Um, but I, I don't think we're ready to move higher yet. So if, if for those of you guys that are new to these weekly outlooks, I am long-term bullish on the dollar index. And if you guys do not know the correlation to the dollar index and Euro USD, you definitely want to write this down or just have it noted. Just know that the dollar index and Euro USD do the exact opposite of each other. Okay. Dimitri. Yeah. Like you, you said uh, you're a newbie. That is totally fine. Just take some notes with this. I look at the dollar index to gauge the strength of the dollar, right? This gauges the strength of the dollar. If it goes up, that's good for the dollar. If it goes down, that's bad for the dollar. Um, now Euro USD does the exact, the exact opposite of the dollar index. Okay. So if I'm telling you guys that I am long-term bullish on the dollar index, that long-term I'm expecting the dollar index to go way, 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 way up my outlook on Euro USD is very low. So my long-term target on Euro USD guys is actually parity 1.00. So going all the way back down, we haven't seen Euro USD um, at parity for some time, but all these lows, I think, I mean, this is just my opinion. Again, guys, I, I believe Euro USD is going to go all the way back down to this zone eventually. Okay. So that's a lot of pips, right? That's 1,500 pips from where we are right now. So that's a big swing trade, a big move that I am looking to capitalize on. Um, but I don't think it's ready to fall yet. Cause here's the thing guys is Everybody sees this flag, right? You guys have to understand the way the market works. It's mostly manipulation, right? It's, it's banks um, manipulating the markets in their favor so they can stop out retail traders and then they can make their money or trick retail traders to take the other sides of their order, right? Because for, let's say the bank wants price to go down to 1.00. Well, we're going to have to have, and, and they want to sell, well, they're going to have to have enough buyers on the other side of the market. And there's not enough buyers in the market right now, in my opinion, because a lot of people see that there's, and that's a very just general, uh, general explanation. It's obviously a lot more complex of how the market moves, but that's the general gist of things. The banks need retail traders or traders on the other side taking, and they need enough people buying to fulfill their sales. Uh, to fulfill their orders. So a lot of people see that there's this giant bear flag on Euro USD right now. And a lot of people see that it's kind of creeping down towards the lows. And a lot of people want to be shorting in this area. So a lot of people are probably early sellers, especially not last week, but the week before last, especially when we kind of started to break through this zone. A lot of people have FOMO from not selling up here or selling inside this zone. So they end up selling at the bottom because they have that fear of missing out and they don't want to miss this catch or this big drop to the downside. So they sell at the lows, which isn't the best, right? We want to be selling at the, we want to sell at the highs and buy at the lows, not sell at the lows and buy at the highs. All right. Ideally. So in my opinion, I think this week we're going to see Euro USD move higher. We're probably going to see Euro USD move towards this 116 zone. Okay. At least, so let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see, sorry if it's a little bit short for you guys. So here we go. Zoomed in a little bit. I would expect Euro USD to move towards this trend line. Okay. So with the dollar index, I don't have a specific target, but wherever, whenever Euro USD gets to this area, that's probably where the dollar index is going to stop falling. And that's where the, the dollar index will probably start rising again. And that's when Euro USD will probably continue to fall. Okay. So for all of you guys that are seeing, I, I see it all over social media already. Everybody's talking about selling Euro USD. Oh, easy, short, easy, short. Careful guys. All right. That's what they want you to think. Okay. And yes, Kevin, you, you make, you make a very good point guys. EU, EU to parity. It's not going to happen overnight guys. When I'm, when I'm saying that my long-term targets on Euro USD are down here, I mean, anything can happen, right? It could, it could move very, very quick, but let's just take an example, right? Of this first drop. Let's just take from a drop of this trend line. And, and this is a very broad overview of Euro USD guys and why I'm bearish on Euro USD. It's because we broke a major, major uptrend earlier this year, right? For a while, for all of 2017, pretty much from the beginning of 2017, all the way until May of this year, we've been, you know, we saw Euro USD rise, which was 
the dollar falling. And then in May, we broke a major, major trend and we've been going down since then. So and now we've had a nice accumulation of orders at these lows, a nice bear flag. But of course, I think there's going to be some manipulation that happens inside of here. Um, also, look at this, guys. Um, let's see. Hold on. Just something I'm noticing. So do you guys see this? I mean, I just kind of want to point this out. Hopefully all of you guys can see this major level, right? Major, 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 major resistance in the past, right? Had a support zone right here. Obviously major support right now. Okay. So this zone is being held right now by buyers. All right. As soon as there's more sellers than buyers in the market, then we're going to see this market fall. But just take an example of going from 120, these highs, like 124, let's say, to where we are now. That's been 259 days. So since, let's see, January of this year until October of this year. So that's what, 10 months, guys. So when I'm talking about price going all the way down here, it's not going to happen this week, next week. It's probably not going to happen within the next month or so either. This long-term target is going to be achieved like probably middle of next year, I would say, is probably when we'll see EURUSD. Maybe a little bit sooner than that. Maybe the first going into the second quarter of 2019 is when we'll see price around this area. But um, we are definitely bearish long term on Euro USD. I'll, I'll just I'll just say that much. And then so we pop this in. You guys can see this weekly support. You guys see how yesterday or last week's weekly candle. It's still finding some support in this zone. Okay, so don't be so quick to just follow people blindly on social media just because it looks it looks good for a sell. You have to look at the whole picture of what's going on, guys. All right, so we're probably going to see another run from the buyers to at least at least this zone. Okay, most likely what we're going to see, guys, honestly, we might actually see Euro USD rise all the way back up to like 117, 118, 119 zone. And at that point, that's going to induce a lot of buyers into the market, right? Once this zone breaks up and people see that kind of similar to what happened over here, too, right? A lot of people saw this zone break or this trend line break, and a lot of people want to buy. Um, but the market does that. So they trick people into buying. So that way there's enough people buying in the market. So that way they can fulfill their sales. And that's basic manipulation of the markets. Um, we actually see it happen a couple of times, like right here, right? Classic manipulation, right? At these lows, everybody has FOMO, right? Fear of missing out, right? No, the people that didn't sell, you know, intraday traders, intraweek traders, even swing traders that didn't sell in this zone, they start to have FOMO. So they sell at these lows, right? Because they, they see this weekly zone break. They're like, oh, it has to go down. This weekly zone br broke. There's nothing else holding it down. But then everybody starts to sell. And then, of course, price pushes it back up. People get stopped out. People that don't use stop losses get margin called and blow their accounts. And, and then we see the same thing happen on the opposite. So that's just basic manipulation. Don't want to go too much into it, guys. Um, I'm doing a little bit more education on today's guys. Um, not every single one of these weekly outlooks is going to have all this education as much as I would love to. It's, it is time consuming. A lot of these weekly outlooks, I'm just going to hop on for like 10 minutes real quick and just, um, just run through the pairs and just tell you guys where I'm at. But I know that this is a lot of new, new faces. So I just wanted to specifically go over it. Okay. So, um, gold also, I don't have gold marked off because I'm not super interested in trading gold, but most like, uh, if you guys don't know this also, gold and Euro USD have a pretty positive correlation to each other, okay? So this week, we, or last week, we saw gold rise, you know, break out of this major zone that we've been in for a while, right? Since the early August, so August, September, October, two months, we sat inside this range. Um, I think we're going to move higher on gold, but same thing like Euro USD, right? I'm just short-term bullish on Euro USD expecting some short-term upside on Euro USD, but the real move in my opinion is to the downside. The big move is to the downside. And gold, same thing. I'm expecting gold to move up a little bit higher, probably towards like the 1240, 1250 range. And then I'll be looking for shorts and I'll be targeting 1150. All right. Um, I like to personally, I like to work with $50 chunks. I like to use like a little quarters theory if you guys are familiar with that. Um, and do it by the $50 increments with gold. So that's why you see I have $1,250 marked off and then $1,200 and then $1,150. All right. 
Um, so you're USD bullish. Um, GJ, I posted a picture last week on social media or in, in Telegram if you guys are in there. And I said I am long-term bullish on GJ as well. So I am expecting GJ to probably break up higher, right? I'm expecting GJ to definitely move up towards the 153 zone, okay? 153 is my target. And that's, well, I go, I go over that in my private webinars, guys. I, I go a lot more in depth in my private webinars. I do one Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for everybody that's in my group. But I do this one for free for you guys to at least give you an outlook. So if you're wanting to learn more, you guys like this type of stuff, hit me up. But um, I am expecting 153 to be reached at some point. And we're really seeing a classic move right here, guys. We're seeing this exact manipulation that I'm talking about happen on GJ right now. You guys see this consolidation structure right around, I mean, this big bull flag around 148, right? Everybody wants to be buying, right? Because, oh, this consolidation, oh, it, it hasn't made a pullback yet. It has to go up, right? So everybody starts buying at these highs. So I am not interested in buying at these highs. And I do think that we are seeing manipulation right now where we see the support broken. And I think we're going to see a lot of sellers stop, start to step into the market. We may see a little bit of downside on GJ this week, but I, I think the downside on this pair is really limited. It's already kind of going through that manipulation right now where we've broken the support. So a lot of people, right? A lot of, a lot of just, just cut and dry, you know, just textbook traders will say, okay, well now that this support is broken on GJ, it's a sell. It depends on yes and no, right? You might be able to get like a small sell on it, right? You might be able to, it, it may go down a little bit from the increase in sellers in the markets. We may actually see price go down a little bit, but I'm not interested in just like a little short term scalp, right? I'd rather find a nice buy entry down here and look for, you know, 700 pips to the upside. So that's what I'm looking for on GJ. On UJ, uh, USD JPY, so if you guys were on last week's webinar, I don't always, I, as much as I know you guys would love me to do that or love for me to do this, I don't always just give out a signal for free, guys. I did last week. Um, it was honestly because I had messed up. I showed my screen, so normally I don't do that, but um, I gave out this trade publicly for you guys. I said this is what I was taking. Take it at your own risk. Oh, 2.47 risk reward, 40 pips for... Um, 99 pips and our target did get reached and if you guys were on last week's webinar I told all of you guys to write down 112 19 I said I said that 112 19 on USD JPY and that was our 50% retracement level of this previous move up upswing and then also where our 50 EMA is at now it does look it still looks bearish right um, I'm not too interested in buying uh, dollar yen. In fact, I'm actually, I would be interested in selling it. So if you guys are in the, in my signals group or connected to my trade copy or whatever, most likely, um, one of the first trades this week, I'm looking for a short on USD JPY. Um, similar guys, same sort of manipulation thing. And we see this happen a lot with these flags, right? So we see this flag, we see price starting to drop right now. I think it's, it probably will drop a little bit right now throughout um, this session. And then once London and New York starts to open, or once we start to see some volatility, everybody has FOMO, right? Everybody has fear of missing out from not catching, you know, the perfect sell up in here. So they sell at these lows and then we're going to see USD JPY spike up, probably meeting the 50 EMA at that point, somewhere around here. And then I'll be looking for that sell. So probably somewhere around like the, the 112 50, 112, 60 zone is where I'll be looking for a sell on dollar yen, but I would, I would like to see some, some downside. Let's see how the weekly candle looks for this pair too. Oh yeah, guys, look at that. Look at that huge reversal pattern, right? If you guys don't know these basics, right? Live, eat, sleep, breathe, whatever, live by the, this, the candlestick cheat sheet. All right. This thing, don't knock it guys, just cause it's basics doesn't mean it doesn't work, all right? You don't have to reinvent the wheel to be successful in Forex, right? Follow what works, follow what you know what works. Exactly, Kevin, an evening star. So right here, guys, evening star, bearish formation. What do we need, what, what qualifies as an evening star? Big, 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 I mean, it doesn't matter how big the uptrend is, but an uptrend followed by like a very, very strong bullish candle, 
with almost no wicker. Um, I don't think the wick matters too, too much. And then we have a doji followed by a bearish engulfing candle, right? And then we have the same opposite side, so morning star. And just uh, to give you guys a little tip, the way I remember this is think of like the sun setting and the sun rising, right? Evening, like the sun comes down. So it's like, it's a bearish formation in the morning, the sun rises. So it's uh, going up, it's bullish. So that's the easiest way. Cause I, I definitely um, used to get these two confused. It's one of the more confusing ones. So hopefully that helps you guys out. And look at that, exactly right there. Right, not quite a doji for the middle, but even better than a doji, we have that exhaustion candle, right? And that was this was also one of the reasons why last week, why I sold, um, why I gave this sell on dollar yen is because guys, you know, you don't knock the basics, right? We have this major, 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 major um, supply level for this pair right here, and so what what happens, right? We just we just follow our system and follow what works. And we use good risk management and we look for good risk ratio and we let the markets do their thing, right? We don't stress, we use 2% risk per trade. But um, I would say, I would target this week, guys. I'm um, just give you guys a target. We're probably gonna see like 111. So definitely a solid, I mean, you guys see this 50 EMA. If you guys don't use the 50 EMA, that's totally up to you guys. I'm not saying you guys have to use it. It's what works for me. Everybody has, you know, I'm sure you probably have an indicator you like. I'm not the biggest fan of indicators, but obviously I don't want to sound hypocritical because a moving average is still a form of an indicator. Um, you know, maybe you like to use stochastics. Maybe you like to use MACD. Maybe you like to use RSI. Whatever works, Ishimoku clouds, whatever works for you. Um, but what I do say with indicators is do not solely rely on an indicator from for your trading. All right. You guys see, you guys probably know those people. You guys know who I'm talking about, or you've probably seen it with, when it's just like, you can't even really see the charts and it's just like five different indicators stacked on top of each other. Hey, if, if it works for them, it works for them. Not going to knock it, but I like to just stick with just normal, you know, maybe one indicator in there, like a moving average or, you know, a couple tools, obviously. There's a lot, a lot of ways, millions of ways to make money in the market. I just have my way that works for me, so I do it. So anyways, this 50 EMA is probably where we're going to see price go down towards, right? We have this, this nice uh, resistance, nice support, nice just like level right here where price is most likely going to head this week, okay? So look for that. Um, yeah, and dollar yen. I just spent a lot of time on dollar yen because... The more I look at it, the more I like it, and I'm definitely going to be one of the pairs that I'm trading this week. Um, AUD, USD, NZD, USD, neither of those pairs I am interested in. Pound Swiss Franc, I am still in this trade, guys. All right, so this is a long-running swing trade that I am still in. I'm currently up, let's see, how many? Um, 280 pips right now. I was at one point, I think I had just broken 400 pips. Just barely, yeah. Last week we had just touched 400 pips profit, so um, I'm letting this thi this uh, this pair do its thing. But I was I've been expecting, and so all of you guys that are in the signals group, all you guys should still be in this if you're connected to the trade copier and your account balance was high enough, you'll still see that you're we're, we're still in this trade. So all of these trades are still running. I did mention that we are probably going to see something happen around this area. We did. We saw major gaps. By the way, guys, I was. Uh, there's some stuff over the weekend with Brexit. Not going to get super into that, but um, yeah, I am still bullish on this pair, right? I'm aiming for 1,143 pips. Um, we're already at risk-free, so there is absolutely no risk on this trade. Um, I'm not interested in changing the stop loss at this point or stop losses at break even. I'm not trailing it right now. I'm not moving my stop loss up into profit yet. Um, I will at some point, but yeah, just want to show you guys that I do a little bit of a little bit of everything, right? Some swing trading, some scalping, some intraday trading just depends on what the market calls for. Um, I'm pretty proud of what's happening on USD CAD. You know, I, I like, you know, even if I don't catch a setup, even if I don't necessarily make money on the setup, I really like when I at least am able to read the market and, and read the direction, right? Sometimes there's a missed opportunity. Obviously, it's all about timing, but just, you know, it's obviously good when you're reading the market properly. So um, I posted this also back on September 13th. Um, I said we were probably going to see some downside on USD CAD, and then somewhere around this zone was going to be our buy zone. 
and we can kind of go back and see. It took a, little, a while, right? We actually got really close to the buy zone, popped up above, kind of out, out of this descending channel we were in, and then went back to our buy zone, right to that sweet spot, and now we're breaking uh, we've broken out. So this is my bias on USD CAD, guys. 134 is my target. I am expecting USD CAD to go higher, um, and I am looking for buys on USD CAD. I would like to it to just pull back just like one more time, just see like a four hour or one hour candle just pop down and just kind of catch this nice entry down here. But I do think overall we are going to see upside on USD CAD. Um, by the way, guys, my computer has nine percent and it is not plugged in, but it is okay because I'm I'm basically done. So um, let's see. We had something in the chat room. I saw, um, Kevin, why did this particular pair gap so much? GJ didn't even gap. Um, well, let's take a look at USD Swiss Franc USD. Cause I just want to see because Swiss Franc is also a part of the pound Swiss Franc that we're in. Um, I honestly need to go. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to be super transparent with you guys. I don't even really know what's going on. I've just heard, I just heard it was with Brexit. Um, I spent this weekend pretty much like unplugged from business and everything guys. So I'm like just getting into everything for the week. I haven't really looked into exactly what is going on. Um, but I know it is something obviously with Brexit. Um, we can see, I'm, I mean, GJ didn't gap as much, but there's definitely large gaps on all the pound pairs. Um, so something out there with Brexit, but I don't want to like just pretend I know what I'm talking about when I don't guys. So that is what I'm expecting for the week, guys. Um, as you know, like I said, an individual setup, I'd say probably dollar yen looks like the best right now. Um, followed by USD CAD. Both of these look really, really nice. I probably prefer dollar yen over everything right now. Just that strong, strong weekly reversal pattern. Uh, the evening star, just that's like free money right there, guys. Like if we if we don't make some something on this on this drop right here in these hundred pips then um you know i mean we might we might not get something who knows we it might not set up for us properly but i'm not just gonna just because i know it's gonna go down guys or i have a really good feeling it's going down i'm not do not guys do not do not do not be going into your meditator fours and just because you hear this confidence behind me and talking about this pair just pressing sell on dollar yen okay because i'm telling you guys all right a very likely scenario. Look where prices are right now. 112.06. We're probably going to see price spike up like 60, 75 pips. Maybe not that high. Maybe we'll only see it go up like 40 pips, but we're definitely going to see, you know, some sort of push from the buyers that way to stop out the early sellers before moving lower. So um, if you are entering something like this, obviously make sure you're using good risk management and your account can handle that type of drawdown. But you guys know me 1%, 2% per trade, right? I'm not in the business of um, flipping accounts or even preaching that you should flip accounts. Um, but that's what we're looking at for the week guys. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. Thank you guys all for pretty much every single person still staying on here. I really appreciate you guys. Um, I will continue to deliver for you guys. And remember each week is a little bit of a variety, right? Don't really try not to miss these because some weeks I may, I may give out a completely free trade for you guys. All right. Um, but yeah, shoot me a message. If you guys like this, if this is your style, if you get a lot of value out of this, if you like my style of teaching, um, I definitely keep a lot, you know, suppressed on these webinars. I don't want to give out like a ton of information. If you guys are in my daily webinars that I do Monday through Thursday for my students, I go a lot more in depth. Some of those, you know, go up to an hour long or more depending on what I want to talk about. So um, if, if this is your guys' style, you know, definitely look into that. I have a lot of things going on in my business model is changing and stuff like that for right now. So go to my website um, if you want to check out more stuff. But yeah, I appreciate you guys. Have a great week. Stay safe trading. And I will catch you guys on next week's weekly outlook. Take care, guys.